This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When you think of a TV presenter, you probably picture some kind of slick Rick. A very charismatic, high energy, extrovert. America. But Louis Farouk is none of those things. I'm going to throw every Every move I every move I know, I'm, I've been practicing, I've been trying really hard. His films would explore the dark, gritty underworld of humanity. What did you stab him with? A uh, ice pick. Despite the success and praise he's received, his style has been very controversial since the beginning. I had to take account of myself and, and how it was that I had not managed to show more of him. Louis Farouk had a very unique set of circumstances that made him the person he is today. He was born in Singapore to his parents, Paul and Anne Theroux. His dad, Paul, was a very famous writer who would write about his travels and he was from America. And his mum was English and worked as a BBC radio producer. And so growing up, I was conscious of, of them as people who, who, who really encouraged us to open our minds. And maybe it was 99% sort of positive, like 1%. I think, like a lot of people, you know, people use this term social justice warriors, right? That is a taught form of judgment about overly do gooding. Yeah, I'm fing better than you, okay? Much better than you. You are garbage. Sometimes that can be inflected with a little bit of a sense of superiority. It's like feeling that we weren't really like, uh, quite like other people. You know, I strive not to endorse, but whatever is in me, remains in me of that, I try to unpack and eradicate. Louis was very bright in school, he was very academic. He graduated from the prestigious Oxford University and ended up landing his first job as a journalist, writing for Metro Silicon Valley and then another paper called Spy. And so Louis was kind of exploring different options of where he wanted to take his life, but then everything would change when he would meet one man in particular, Michael Moore. Well, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, you want to respond? Well, all, you you yeah, want to respond well, to anything yeah, well, we just heard? Yeah, I'd like about ten minutes to respond to. Uh, well, give us, uh, give us a couple headlines. What you'd like to say? Michael Moore is a very controversial character. He's a world-renowned documentarian and is kind of known for his very brash, confrontational demeanor. You know, he was loud, he was in your face, he had an opinion, he made you aware of it. He was everything that Louis Farouk isn't. Challenge you to come down and format a computer desk. But what exactly did Philip Morris die from? And so in 1994, Michael Moore would have a show on NBC. It was called TV Nation. It would explore different political and social issues in a kind of fun, interesting way and it would have many different segments but because BBC had funded part of this show they had requested that one of the presenters was British and so in steps your boy Louis. Welcome back to TV Nation we're standing here on the fabled Madison Avenue with our correspondent Louis Theroux. Louis this street is the home of America's PR geniuses and image makers. And who better for an image makeover, I was thinking, than the Ku Klux Klan? Straight out the gate, Louis gets stuck into a pretty controversial topic of the KKK. The story was basically about how the KKK was trying to remarket itself to be a bit more friendly, which is a pretty big task, something that I don't even think Don Draper could pull off. The white people are my family. Yeah. I love them, but it doesn't mean I hate anyone else. I'm mean, hating people is, is, is stupid. Right, right. It's just a question of loving some less than others. Uh, his style was very interesting. He would go in with this very easygoing demeanor. Well, the skinhead in the crowd, please <laughs> leave immediately. He would joke around with them. He was a little bit cheeky. He had a very subtle, sarcastic sense of humor that would often go over their heads. But his style allowed him to ask very hard hitting questions, the type of questions Michael Moore might ask. But instead of doing it in a very clearly confrontational way, he had this childlike innocence, this genuine intrigue into the people he spoke with. And it's craftsmanship with a cat. Capital K. With a K. Now, why is he sticking his arm in the air like that? It is a salute. You know, a lot of times the media will, they'll think that it's a Nazi salute. The, by Na it, it does. It looks a little bit like a Nazi salute. BBC, after seeing TV Nation, approached Louis with an offer for his very own TV show, which would become the groundbreaking Louis Farouk's Weird Weekends. The BBC, uh, slightly behind Michael Moore's back, had approached me and said, here, why don't you come and make a show on your own? Michael was a bit upset about... Is that a uh, friction that still exists? No, we, we dead did that beef. <laughs> In 1998, Louis Farouk's Weird Weekends would be released. My money doesn't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I want to see you wiggle wiggle, for sure. With the very first episode being a deep dive into the world of televangelism. 
In Great Britain, the people don't have Christian TV stations like this, do they? Not, not as far as I know. I mean, maybe there are some I don't know about. Yeah, not much. So they need people like Marcus and Joni to go over there and, you know, they're thirsting for it. So we are really blessed in America. My TV Nation segments involve me making fun of people, more yeah. or less. And, and, and in, in Weird Weekends, I sort of said, you know what, we need to expand the emotional uh, palette a bit. And, and it can't just be me. We've got to actually have some other moods in here and get to know people and like people. Thanks, Anne Lee. Thanks, Love you. Love you too. Angels on your body. Angels on your body. Before we go any further with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is the number one website building platform. It is designed to take all of the hard technical work out of website design and create a platform where you can make your own high quality website quickly, easily, and much more cost efficient. Squarespace works by having tons of different templates that you can pick, you can select and customize any of them to perfectly fit what it is you do. And it really works for anything. If you're a graphic designer, or you might run a clothing brand. And they have tons of built-in features like email marketing, e-commerce, appointment scheduling. So be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant. And to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. And so Louis Fru gets stuck in, he enters this world and what's interesting to see is despite the fact that Louis is an atheist and that he made it very clear to the people he was with that he's atheist, it would have been quite tempting and easy for him to just go in and be very adversarial. Even though I didn't believe, I wanted to please Anne Lee so much that a few words spilled out. And he seemed to genuinely attempt to try and connect with their religion. He would sing, say some prayers, etc. And ultimately gave this very honest and humble look into their world. Is she okay? Yeah, she's wonderful. That's where you really want to be. Yeah. I can't explain how iconic Weird Weekends was. From UFO fanatics to black nationalists to South African apartheid deniers, he gave a very honest look into what were often these very tough topics. Eddie, yes, if sir. you by your own assessment are a racist, right? Yes. Then I what am. are you doing here breaking, breaking bread with, uh, with black people? Because I am. The people he would interview would completely open up to him, allowing him to really get into their heads and understand their ideology. I'm not a wealthy man, but you know what? I got it all in here. Doesn't, it's not what you have, it's what you are. Get in that detail. It's in the common on. Keep it alone on your Showing the viewer not only what that person thought, but why they thought it. So the question here really is, why is Louis' style so effective? What did you do to him exactly? Uh, uh, shambok. You shambocked him. Yeah. Did you shambok him yourself? No, no, the guys are can, uh, not allowed to do it anymore. Why? I'm on suspender for uh, five years. I think the best way of me explaining this is by showing two different approaches to the same topic. So let's start off with Michael Moore with an interview with Fred Phelps. Now, Fred Phelps was the head of the very controversial Westboro Baptist Church. They were known for picketing dead soldiers' funerals, being extremely against gay people, and they were known as the most hated family in America. He's in hell now. That's what needs to be preached. You're like dogs eating your own vomit. Wake up. Dogs eating their own vomit? Yeah, but they, but they do that. I mean, my dog eats his own vomit. Fred knew a lot about dog vomit, and I wanted to hear more. But I thought it was about time Fred met my friends on the Sodomobile. This is our Sodomobile. They would like you to come on. Reverend Fred was outnumbered. So what did we learn from this interview? That Fred Phelps hates gay people? The thing is, we knew that already. We haven't learned anything new here. Michael Moore really achieves nothing in this interview other than dunking on the guy's ideology. Now, let's look at Louis Farouk. Louis Farouk also met the Westboro Baptist Church. We started picketing when, we, when I was uh, first grade. Six years old. So people had been treating me the way that you see us, see us being treated now since I was that young, so I mean, people didn't treat me right. What did they do? <laughs> well, nobody wanted to talk to me, really, in, at school. And um, they were ashamed to be around me. You know that sense of being ostracized. Uh -huh. If you preach that the world is hateful and full of condemned sinners, then the world will start to take that shape. Well, 
For a very brief moment, we get to see a glimpse of the humanity in this woman. A snapshot of her psychology and how she has become radicalized. The reason that Louis was able to pull this off was because he spent so much time with the Westboro Baptist Church and had very delicately gained their trust. In fact, he's gained so much trust from them that he's able to ask very hard confrontational questions, but he does so in a way that the interviewee doesn't storm off angrily. Is it, it, Wouldn't it, you it, like the Gestapo now? You like interject? <laughs> Your role is interject the, the doctrinal hard line. Louis is very aware of what he's doing and why his style works. He did an interview with the BBC where he said a big part of the job is building rapport. It doesn't always happen the way you want, but what you find is if you go in with a sympathetic presence, or at least listening and paying attention, people, for the most part, are happy to open up and feel grateful for you being there. On top of this, another part of Louis's demeanour is he comes across maybe a bit dumb. Someone snitched on one of, on, on you or one of your friends, what would you do? No what comment. type of question is that? No, no, no comment. comment. He's not exactly threatening. He is very disarming. And so because he's so harmless, people's guard drops when they're around him. But he was never a pushover. He just dealt with confrontation a bit different. If someone said something he didn't like, instead of saying you're a bad person for thinking this way, you would kind of flip it on them in a way that would get their humanity to come out. He would say how their opinion makes him feel. Hey, Anyone yeah. except for fucking bigots. I'm sorry that you were raised for the devil. To but me as an outsider, it's mildly upsetting to see someone get upset. And he would actually get involved in their activities. He might attend some events, he might help them construct some things. He doesn't act as this standoffish documentarian, but he becomes part of the story. On top of his series that explored wacky subcultures, he also did these kind of diaries of very famous people, such as Chris Eubank, Paul and Debbie. And it'd be around this sort of time from the early 2000s to the mid 2000s where Louis himself would become a bit of a celebrity. But it would also be around this time where Louis would make one of the biggest mistakes of his entire career. A, a profile that I'd made of an eccentric aging celebrity who appeared to have secrets but undefined um, secrets had become uh, the most in-depth TV portrait of Britain's most notorious offender. In this now a race documentary, it's pretty hard to find. BBC tried everything they could to scrub it. Louis Farouk met the now disgraced BBC presenter called Jimmy Savile. Did you argue much when you were living together? Never. 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 And in this documentary, it was clear that Louis had become friends with Jimmy Savile. There was something in Jimmy he liked. After the passing of Jimmy Savile, when all the crimes came out and everyone found out what had happened, Louis made a follow-up to his Jimmy Savile video where he went back over the story and reviewed how he missed the obvious how everyone did, and how he humanized Jimmy and kind of made him look good. And this leads us on to the main critique that Louis Farouk receives. And that is that Louis Farouk gets accused of giving a voice to very dangerous, radical, extreme people. And over the last six to seven years, there's been a growing concern over whether it's responsible for a filmmaker to host people who have very extreme ideas or have done crimes for the fear that it might spread them and it might legitimize them. It's definitely a fair critique to make, a fair question to ask, but I would argue that Louis Stahl actually does the opposite. The just killed Christ! You're gonna try to say they worship the same God as I worship? They killed Christ. What do you New what do you flash brainiac? Christ was Jewish. His jokey and rapport building style actually allows him to ask better quality confrontational questions that if done in any other way would typically lead to the person being interviewed getting angry and storming off. Instead, what we get is an honest response and often you can kind of see their ideology unraveling whilst all along still managing to recognize the humanity in that person and the circumstances that led them to believing the things they do. However, as time has passed, culture has changed a lot. And I'm going to give my personal opinion here, but I feel like you can see that this criticism has started to get to Louis Farou a little bit. If we take a look at his newest series that came out very recently called Forbidden America, there's an episode in that called Extreme and Online. It's all about the rise of very far right, racial, identitarian kind of movements. So-called dissident right, whatever you want to call that thing that yeah. you were part of that used to be called white nationalism, but... I guess that's not a term that's in favor anymore. We take that and then contrast it with the 2003 video he did called Louis and the Nazis. So if I told you I was Jewish, would that create a problem between us? Well, because you've got the camera right now, I'd allow you to stay. If not, I'd probably kick your ass and 
put you in the street somewhere. If you watch these two documentaries back to back, I think it's clear that the one in 2003 was better. You get a much better understanding and kind of like this look under the hood, so to speak, of these Nazis. Whereas the newest one felt very surface level. And you did a Nazi salute. Oh, I'd mean to. You're at an event whose entire kind of raison d'etre really is to say, hey, you know what? We're not the alt right. You had one job and, and you failed. I did not do a Nazi salute. Well, it looked like, you know that word, optics? Oh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the term optics. Yeah. You know what else I'm familiar with? Bad journalism. You should get the fuck out of my house. I'm not in your house. Yeah, well, you can leave, because I don't want this interview done. C can we de-escalate, no. please? No. It didn't feel like he was successful in penetrating deeper into their minds. Or well, seeing the reasons and causes of what is attracting young people to this movement. There was something different in Louis' demeanor from that of the one in 2003. You're seething now. No, you're, you're seething. Like you're about to start crying. You're the one that's Why crying. are you so triggered? Come on, man. And I'm not the only person who noticed that Louis' tone was very different. There was an article from The Telegraph. The weariness is showing. You can hear it in his voiceover, which sounds positively depressed. And you can see it in the fact that he no longer hangs back and lets people dig their own graves. Instead, he's a bit more confrontational, a little less patient. You look like Get one. the fuck out of my house. Are you kidding me? Wait, wait, when did you lose your sense of humor? And it's a shame, really, because I don't think it actually achieves much. I think it does the opposite. My same critique earlier of Michael Moore would apply to Louis in this situation. And look, I'm not Louis Farou. I don't know why this was the case. I can only make my guess. The BBC probably puts a lot of pressure on him to not show these people in a good light in any way. Because, obviously, they would get a lot of Twitter and media backlash if they do. I think all of this, coupled with the fact that when he went to revisit the Westbrook Baptist Church, he had met a British fella there that had joined the church because of one of Louis's documentaries and other documentaries on that topic. And Louis speaks in interviews how he often battles with the whole amplification of extreme voices. With much more effort, he could have exposed the roots of where this modern raced realist ideology is coming from, what causes people to fall into that rabbit hole, and he could have dismantled the ideas properly like he did in the 2003 one. If, the, if it is someone like, say, a neo-Nazi or someone involved in religious intolerance, I'm just so curious about what takes someone to that place, what, what, what's in their mind, but to actually berate them, to give them a hard time, or even be particularly journalistically confrontational, that's not, that's not my default mode. And look, I say all of this because I adore Louis Fru. That's the only reason I'm making that critique. He certainly hasn't fallen off in any way. He still makes great content. But Louis' bread and butter is empathy and his style. And I think now more than ever, it's very important to have him do that. You'd see me and presumably you would know that I was not cut out to fight. And you're seriously saying that you would You might not even fight. They might just, just slap the shit out of you. Would <laughs> you be helping? Now, I might feel sorry for you since I know you in. You're a good man. I might tell him to fall back, but you're going to get one or two rounds in, you feel me? Louis Louis' incredible work has allowed us to better understand the human condition and its many weird, scary and wonderful expressions. So here's to Louis. May he continue to explore his genuine curiosity of the world in whatever way that he desires. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here.